Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harris and I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books. Today we are going through the Wildest Dreams tag, which was uh, first put together by Heather Reed, and I was tagged in this one by my friend Rebecca Nicole. Um, I've not done a tag in like forever, so um, I thought now's a great time to try and catch up on the times that I have been tagged recently and uh, do a few. So um, this one is all about like, I don't know, some uh, manifesting. We're manifesting. Okay. So um, probably a shorter tag. I never know who to tag at the end of these because I think that a lot of the channels that I talk to who do tags have already done this one. Um, so I'm not going to tag anyone, but if you are watching this and you uh, enjoy my video and you want to do your own, then please do tag me when you make your own and um, I'll watch it and comment and let you know what I think. So first off, question number one, what is your fantasy time and place to read a book? So um, I, less of a fantasy and more of an actual reality. So a few weeks ago in April, I went on holiday to, uh, well, I say a holiday. It was a stag do, um, which Americans, you guys call bachelor parties. Um, but one of my friends hired out a big country farmhouse. Um, and it was completely out in the middle of nowhere, nothing nearby. Um, and I went down there, um, and because I'm a parent, <laughs> and not a lot of the other guys were. Um, a couple of the mornings I got up quite early because I'm just used to getting up early. And like, for me early is like, you know, seven-ish in the morning or whatever. And so I got up in the morning, I made myself a lovely pot of black coffee and um, I sat by an open window on a massive comfy, um, like armchair thing and read like a ton of uh, a ton of the shadow rising the fourth book in the wheel of time and um i have to say that if i could recreate my perfect reading scenario it would probably be um in a bright and airy room in uh in the countryside with uh, natural light providing my reading light um, with a lovely breeze coming in through the window and uh, with my favourite music coming through on some good quality speakers um, and a good book and a big pot of coffee um, and to be doing that in the morning as well. The mornings um, are a great time to read. When I read in the evenings I'm often kind of um, fighting against my uh, tiredness from the day of being a parent or working or both um so that uh just that time to myself with that lovely pot of coffee with that lovely natural surroundings with that breeze i don't think i could get anything better honestly um and i had a great time uh and if i could read that way every single morning i would question two your fantasy personal library so my fantasy personal library. Um, one of the big things that I started this channel on, the kind of on the back of the idea of, and this is something I talked about in my newbie video, was that I had not read any of the big fantasy series. Like when I started the channel, I had read the Greenbone Saga trilogy. I'd read the Farseer trilogy, the first book, the first Farseer trilogy. I had read the Cosmere. And that was pretty much it. Um, oh no, I'd read the Dresden Files up to where they are now. So if you think like of all the massive, super popular series, I'd probably only read like four or five. Um, so one of the first things that I think I would do would be to seek out the classics of the genre from the last kind of 20 years. And then a few from earlier than that. And I would be trying to get hardcover uh first editions so this is like personal library mm, actually this fits better for a later question so we'll come back to that 
But if we're talking about fantasy library, um, I went on a holiday to Enfleur in France, and we stayed in a house that was owned by some friends of my grandparents. And um, the house was on the high street in Enfleur. It's probably been turned into 10 flats by now, but it was a very weird house. Um, it was quite like... It's kind of like a bit grim in many ways. Like it wasn't the most tidy or clean house. Um, but obviously, you know, we we were just, it was just like friends that we rented it from. And um, one of the rooms was a library. And I'd, I'd never seen a personal library before. I think that the owner was a solicitor or something like that. And he had um, a lovely massive window on one wall that looked out onto the harbour. <clears throat> because the, the house was very near the harbour. And um, then lining all of the other walls were books, and they were floor to ceiling, and he had a library ladder. And he had, um, in the room, in the middle of the room, were two armchairs, coffee table, and a big, massive sofa. And all of it was incredibly comfortable. The, book, the room was clearly designed for reading. And I don't think you could honestly do any better. Um... I don't think that as someone who is kind of or aspires to be a minimalist like myself, I would want to have a thousand thousand books um, or, you know, maybe I, I, I could fill a room like that with books. Um, but I think that I would be looking at a lot of books and going like, will I reread this book? So like, I've kept a few books like I've got some shelves that I'm looking at right now and I've kept for example like the Red Rising trilogy I don't know if I will reread Red Rising ever um I've currently kept them because they were a gift um and so I tend to keep hold of gifts for longer but if I look at that and go will I actually go back to this and will I reread this the answer is probably no and in that case someone else could read those books for a discounted or free price so you know it's very much to me like a personal library the, the books that you own and the books that you keep should be kept for a reason either you know sentimental reasons which i completely agree with or the fact that you know you're going to reread them which is one of the reasons why i've been buying physical copies of the will of time rather than um, reading it digitally or getting it from the library so um, I know that I want to reread that like after having read a few I definitely know that I want to reread it um, because of all the stuff that I've caught on to I bet there's so much more on that reread so for me a home library doesn't need to be massive it needs to be the amount of books that I would reread in this ideal scenario I have all the time in the world to read and um, so I assume I'd become independently wealthy somehow. Um, so yeah, I think that's how I would how I would stock the library. So I'd have that lovely seating in the middle, then I'd have the shelves all the way around, and a lovely window with a nice view, ideally. Book question three: Imagine you've decided to build a bookshop. What features would you want in that shop? So this is actually a, a really good question because. Um, while I've never worked in a bookshop, I do love bookshops, as I think every booktuber probably does. Um, <clears throat> what would I have in my bookshop? What would I call it? Um, <laughs> I was going to, as a joke, say I could call it Hardy Books, um, but that's not fair. That's, uh, that name's taken, I think. Um, so maybe... Um, I don't know. I think I'd like a literary reference. Um, I've I've seen books that are called like Chimera books or something, and um, what is it? It's that Chimera Book Festival, and um, I can't remember the name of the bookshop in um, Portishead, but as Mister Minerva, I think it's called. So like, there's some really good like classical references there. I think I would probably look up like a god of lit like a Greek god of literature or something like that and maybe name the book after that. 
Um, I don't want my own name on stuff apart from this YouTube channel because this is literally all about me and my thoughts. So yeah, probably something like that, like a uh, name it after like a some Greek or Roman god or, or Norse god or something like that. And then um, I would curate the book, so it would be. Um, I would make sure that obviously there was a very well stocked fantasy and sci-fi section um but i would you know i would shy away from all the other sections of books but i would make sure that you know um the books that were there were good books um and you know even if it's you know on the trashier end like things like dresden files or whatever um i don't know no judgment trashier is the wrong term but like populist i don't know terrible there's no good way to describe these i don't think would it sell new or secondhand books? Um, personally, I have absolutely no, I don't really care between whether a book is new or secondhand. Um, most books I um, try to get secondhand if I can. So like I just bought this book actually. So Mare has been raving about the first binding. So I picked up a secondhand copy of this. It only cost me, I mean, it's a little yellowed and the, um, dust jacket is absolutely beaten up as you might be able to tell on the video I don't know it's been absolutely beaten up but perfectly readable absolutely perfectly paid there's no you know pages missing or no rips or stains absolutely fine that's absolutely perfectly readable and unless you're a book collector which is kind of a different thing to being a obsessive book reader I know a lot of people like yeah book collecting and book reading are two different hobbies and personally i don't really collect the books i just read them so this one has come into my house and will likely leave unless i absolutely love it and want to pick up the matching sequel in that case may end up searching and, and getting a new dust jacket for this one but we could also just have the naked hardcover because Naked up. Pardon me. Naked hardcovers are great. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, I would probably sell. Um, I would sell new and secondhand books. I don't think there's any worth any distinction. The secondhand books would be cheaper um, to enable more people to have access to reading, um, which I think is really important. Um, what would it sell? Anything else? Um, obviously, it has to have a coffee shop. I think that's just a no-brainer. I like to drink coffee and read books, so I would like other people to do that. I'd like to have lots of really comfy sofas around to enable people to read. Um, it'd be fantastic if you could have some sort of system whereby people could just come in and read the second-hand books and pop them back on the shelf as long as no one wanted to buy them. Um, and uh, what was the next thing? Would it sell anything else? No, yeah, coffee. What features would you want in that shop? Yeah, big comfy sofas. Um, I'd like it to be a large shop. I know that like small intimate bookshops are something that a lot of people love and that I love as well. But a large bookshop has so much promise to me. Going into a bookshop and being like, this has the book I'm looking for is such a nice feeling. And like looking and going like, this book is so big, it must have the book I'm looking for. One person, not a booktube creator, with whom you can have a good conversation about books. If you don't know a person like this, who do you know that you wish would become a reader so that you could talk books with them? So I have talked about in the past that my wife does like reading books, but she doesn't like reading the same kind of books as I do. I've bought her a few fantasy novels that I thought that she would appreciate. Um, so that were similar to other stories that she likes. So for example, she really loves the movie Age of Adeline with Blake Lively. And I picked up... Um, the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, because a lot of people have said that the um, Age of Adeline is an extremely similar book, a uh, similar movie to the book, to the point where people were like, was this plagiarised? Um, <coughs> pardon me, sorry, my cough is terrible. And um, so, yeah, I think that that would be a big thing for me, would be that I would really love her f to try... Uh, out the books that I read and um, she basically just takes one look and goes that book is too long and she um, is not a big fan of third person perspective 
um, which is obviously what 99% of um, fantasy books are, So, or at least the ones that I read. So for her, it, it can be. It, it's a big hurdle for her to get over in terms of her personal reading likes, as they have been, and um, the kind of stuff that I read. Um, I do think that she would love a lot of them, but it's it's I'm not going to force it on her because she won't enjoy it if I do. Um, if you won a million dollars and you could only spend it on books or book related items, how would you spend it? So I think the first thing that I would try and do, if it was possible um, to use this money, um, I would donate half of it to, or probably a lot more than half, I would donate a significant sum to my local library system. Um, I think that, um, and I would, I would say spend the money how you want, but I would love it if you got a better fantasy and sci-fi selection. Um, because they often only get the biggest hits, like even the first binding, right? Who, which is a massively popular book. Um, no copies in my library system. The Will of the Many, most people's book of the year last year in the fantasy space. No copies in my library system. Um, I have asked my library system to buy a lot of books. So, for example, I asked them to buy all the Bound and the Broken books, um, but. And they have bought those, and they bought all the Murderbot books, um, and they've bought a lot of books that I have suggested. Um, but it's, I would like the system to be able to have more books, basically, and I'd like them to have a better sci fi and fantasy section. So, in an ideal world, that's what I would do. I would buy a load of fantasy and sci fi books for my local library, and um, I would buy. Um, <coughs> special editions and first editions of books, the um, things like broken binding editions or um, first editions. Um, and I would be looking out for the classics of the genre that I have not read and um, some of my favorites. So I would be, um, and I think I probably will eventually try and track down a hardcover set of The Wheel of Time. Um, there is actually one, weirdly, there's one on Amazon for 400 pounds. And I have considered it because it's not, a silly amount of money for 14 books um, if those books are first editions. The other thing that I would buy is I would um, switch away from Kindle to um, uh, Android based e-readers so I would get a books um, large format and small format e-reader. That's probably the eventual goal that I have for my book reading I would just like the opportunity to access other stores um, I recently found out that in the UK there's a ton of um, other library cards that you can get access to even if you're not a resident in those areas so I've added all of those library cards to my Libby app but I can't read them on an e-reader I have to read them on a tablet so um that's kind of the next step is like well i actually think i do need the books e-reader because i could get access to so many more free books um yeah I'd, I'd have my personal library um and if it if booktube stuff counts when we're talking about book related items i would probably get um some really nice booktube stuff so i would build a little set at home i would buy a camera i'd buy lights i'd buy professional grade microphones and i would buy a really nice laptop to edit videos on um that or probably desktop actually so yeah that'll probably be it and actually that's the last question i can't believe that i managed to get this video to 20 minutes although i have stopped the video to cough a lot of times um you might not be able to tell i'm not feeling particularly great um but we move on uh i'm not I'm not on death's door or anything. I've just got a bit of a cough. It's just very annoying. So um, the final question is to tag people. I mentioned this up top, but I never know who actually wants to do tags. And I don't like to make people feel like they should be pressured into doing a tag. However, um, oh, is there someone like a tag? Hmm. No, we're going to hold off. Um, if you have enjoyed this video and you want to make your own, please do so. <laughs> please do so. Um, tag me, 
in your video description when you do it. And of course, if you've liked this video, give it a like. If you would like to chat with me about anything that we've talked about in this video, please drop down into the comments. And finally, subscribe to the channel because every little subscription helps as we go on our way to 1000 subs. Thanks so much for watching. I'll speak to you tomorrow.